Hi, Math with Marty, once again. Today we're going to uh, make some stabs at the great classical problem of the brachistochrone. I've talked about the source of this problem on previous shows. It was Johann Bernoulli who phrased the problem in 1686 as a challenge to the great mathematicians of Europe uh, of whether they could describe the trajectory a roller coaster should be constructed with to deliver a ball from point A to point B in the shortest possible time. And it's interesting to remember that Newton invented calculus, and I'm not sure what we mean when we say Newton invented calculus. I haven't read enough of the history, but the credit is Newton in 1666 invented calculus. And calculus was not published because Newton didn't promote it until Leibniz published about 10 years later in 16, must have been in the 1670s. Was it 20 years later? It was anyway how, it was anyways in the, those decades. And within 10 years of Leibniz publishing calculus, uh, Bernoulli was able to phrase a problem calling for the most advanced concepts in calculus, far beyond what any of us took in uh, university if we did a four-year degree in typical uh, engineering program or, or what people would usually do in, in a math program. So this is depressing that uh, these guys had the ability when the subject was first invented, they could see that quickly the implications and where it would lead to that uh, us miserable guys 300 years later uh, with the benefit of uh, hindsight and uh, all our advanced knowledge are still not able to figure out because this is a problem I can't solve. But we'll have something to say about it anyhow. Um, I'll draw the problem on the board. Boy, it's a little dirty. We'll just wipe it off. We've got point A and point B, and we said the roller coaster could, could be a straight line. A lot of people say, well, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. But some people notice that it's possible, maybe by swooping down earlier, that you could gain enough speed, even though you're covering a long distance, that as you roll down, you might get to the finish first. Not everyone finds this totally obvious, so what we've done, and this is like a special treat for the history of television, we've got a demonstration here where we're gonna, we're gonna try, and, try and show you that it's really so. Now, if we go over to the other picture, we got, uh, we've constructed these uh, little roller coasters here with the molding, and we've got some uh, ball bearings, and. Uh, Sharon's gonna drop uh, drop the ball bearings. We've got three of them. One of them is pretty well a straight line. One of them is uh, kind of a shallow curve, and the other is kind of a deeper curve. Cue them up, Sharon, and uh, we'll we'll let them all. Should we do them all at once? Yeah, why not? See what happens. Well, oh, it's not even not even close. I think you got to do that again, Sharon. That's okay. Well, you did it fine. It just happened so fast that people can't see it. Now you'll notice the middle one, they hardly, hardly even got going. Just let them go and see what happens. Yeah. Whoa. Yo. That's incredible. That's almost unbelievable. I think let's do it just with two of them, Sharon. Do the, the, the middle one that's the flat one and do kind of the shallow one. The sh yeah, that's right. Because then you just have two to focus on. You don't have to worry about trying to follow the deep one. It's a little bit hard because the balls are small. But you'll see just if we go those, uh, those two, yep, there she goes. And, and the one going the straight line is hardly it even gotten started by the time the other one was finished. Do the two steep ones now. They'll, they'll happen quite a lot faster. Yeah. Could, could you see which one got there first? I think, was it the steeper one? You got there first? Try it again. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I think it was. 
Is there any other uh, creative camera angles that we're interested in uh, in uh, dealing with on this uh, uh, on this problem? You wanna you wanna catch Neil as he bobbles bobbles the bearings as they come to the end of the, tra the race? Yo, well, that's kind of a nice angle. Now shoot him back to him and let him do it again because he's gonna get some uh, get some close-ups there. Just follow one of them. Okay, ready? Unbelievable. Now, uh, take, uh, take the steepest one and drop it down the steep trajectory. And just, yeah, just watch it as it rolls back and forth within its own trajectory. And I want to talk about that a little bit. Up and down, up and down, up and down. Now there's something we can talk about because it's like a pendulum, isn't it? I mean, it's one thing that people know about a pendulum is that the period of a pendulum is fairly constant, um, no matter uh, how large the amplitude of the swing. And I'd like to expand on that idea to show how we can understand some things about the problem of the brachistochrone. So we'll, we'll go back to the board now. <coughs> 